Hi everyone. For a filthy lot entertainment, welcome to Drawn and Cornered. It's the show that corners today's best comic book artists as they answer deep dive questions while they draw art suggested by fans. After the show, you can bid on the art and all the proceeds will go to our guests' charity of choice. So make sure you watch through to the end to see the final product. Today in the drawing chair is Tyler Jenkins. He's an Eisner Award nominee and you know him for his incredible work on books like Peter Panzerfaust, Grass Kings, Black Badge, and his new series with acclaimed writer W. Maxwell Prince, King of Nowhere from Boom Studios. Tyler, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. We're going to do a little something different this time. Tyler has opted to draw a piece of his own choosing. Uh, tell the viewers what you're going to draw for us today and which charity this is going to benefit. Uh, this is going to benefit Black Lives Matter. And uh, to be honest, I'm not, I wasn't 100% sure what I was going to draw. Um, I prefer to work on comic pages and comic panels and stuff like that, as opposed to on straight pinups. So maybe a couple smaller pinups of characters um, from my books. Um, I haven't done a commission. In, uh, that's not true. I've done two commissions in the last three months um, of characters that are mine, one of Spider-Man and one of some other character, superhero, I don't know. And, uh, so that. Awesome. Let's get on with the show. Uh, Tyler, before the world plunged into darkness in this alternate timeline, um, what was the last convention that you attended? Um, the last convention I attended, I think, um, was the Calgary show, actually. And only because oh. it's only because it's local. I haven't traveled um, to a convention in uh, at least a year, two years or a year and a half, I think. So before that, it would have been Emerald City would have been my last convention outside of local stuff. Is, is there anything about doing conventions that you miss, or or is there is there anything about them that you can just live without? I what I could live without. <clears throat> is any part that involves <clears throat> sitting at a table for any period of time, drawing. I mean, I don't mind drawing on demands like that, but I don't, I don't do commissions at conventions for money anymore. Mm -hmm. I just do drawings for people in their books that they get or whatever. I don't, that part I don't mind, but I hate sitting at the table. I hate being there for four or five or four or five days. Give me a break. Yeah. But I do definitely miss um, hanging out with all the people at comic shows. I mean, I'll hang out pretty much any time instead of work. So conventions are generally right up my alley. Yeah, for sure. Well, hopefully when the world comes back to, you know, being normal again, we can all go back to doing all those things that we miss. So Tyler, um, I'm wondering if you are able to adjust your setup a little bit so it would be a bit more comfortable so that we can, we can talk and have you draw at the same time. All right, let's see what we can do here. Now you started off uh, as a fine artist and illustrator. What made you want to use your talents to do comics? Uh, I didn't actually. I, when I graduated from art school, we had a project in art school that was a comic book project. And uh, when I graduated, I was like, I'm never working in comics. It's too much goddamn work. <laughs> and then uh, I met Curtis at a convention. We just stopped by the table that uh, me and uh, Hillary were at selling art and illustrations and stuff like that. And he's like, hey, you want to try making a comic? I was like, well, all right. And then, uh, and that's been it. As soon as we did that, uh, I was... Uh, kind of you kind of get hooked on it and i haven't managed to escape yet <laughs> that's all <laughs> so your wife uh, your wife hillary as you just mentioned started coloring your comic work with grass kings yep. and she has an unusual process compared to most modern colorists yet yep. it complements your line so well what's it like to work together working together has been great it actually took me a long time to to because I was painting Grass Kings to start with. 
and to let it go because I like painting it but I wasn't going to hit a deadline right at the end of issue, the last issue of the first arc and I asked her to step in and the work she did was better than the work I was doing so <laughs> I asked her if she would continue and we've been she's been coloring everything that I've done since excellent you were also um speaking of that series you were also nominated for an eisner award in 2018 oh, uh, and was. honored bestowed on too many canadians now how did that uh how did that feel and what was that experience like um i was really exciting actually it was really cool it's one of those things where you're it's kind of like <clears throat> i think when you get into doing anything any art particularly well, particularly comics, any art, you have these measures of success that are kind of handed down to you. And you're like, oh, this is what that means. This is what it means to make it. This is what this means. This is what this. And so at the time, that was super exciting. It's still like super exciting. It's a, a an honor to be nominated, of course. Um, and so it was very exciting to have the work recognized that way. Um, mm -hmm. For some reason, made it feel legit oh for I mean, sure um it's less i think that stuff to me is less important now um the measures of success now that mean something to me are completely related to individuals who are touched by the work or mean something to them or or hell or even just entertained by it that mm -hmm. to me is far more a measure of success than awards or any of that other kind of thing or sales numbers or all of those measures of success. Sure, yeah. Well, one thing is for sure, I mean, Grass Kings was one of my favorite books of, of that year. I, I just loved the, just the, the rich detail in the world building that you guys that were able to put into that book. It was, it was quite spectacular. Um, now your, uh, your, your work in general has a very natural free flowing feel to it. Can you talk about your process and how you go about laying out a page? Uh, it depends on the book. Um, every book I do, the process is completely different. Mm -hmm. um, for uh, for Grass Kings, it was drawn or penciled, inked, and painted in one shot on the board. No corrections, no changes. If that's what it was, that's what it turned out. Very few panels were redrawn. They had to be really, really bad to be re mm -hmm. redrawn. Um, and then <clears throat> um, that was painted with watercolor. And when Hillary took over the painting on that, she just painted on the originals as well. Um, then a uh, black badge was painted on, um, we'd do the pencils and the inks and then print it out in like a very light blue line. And Hillary would paint gouache and obliterate all of the marks. And then we would composite them back together um, on the computer. Um, King of Nowhere is done fully, completely on the boards with paint and ink, just like Grass Kings was. Um, there's a little bit more opaque stuff because she's also using um, pastel and gouache with the watercolor as like opaque elements on top. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm doing another book with Matt right now um, that I don't think has been announced yet. Um, but it went, that one we're doing actually all in um, pencil crayon and uh, like black pencil crayon and black chalk and charcoal. Mm -hmm. And what's the name of that book? Uh, it's called Fear Case, but I don't know if it's been announced past that. All right, okay. Well, you can't give us any like little exclusive nuggets? Um, it's with me and Matt again. It'll be really awesome. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> and it's really gory. It's the goriest book I've drawn. Oh, cool. Is it a horror? Um, sort of like a crime investigation horror. All right, cool. There's definitely horror aspects to it. But it's really right, cool. Well, it's fun. Your style is far from what's become known as a typical comic book style, uh, which must have made it difficult sometimes. Do you ever feel like, you know, you should draw more like the Marvel DC style? And what would you say to an aspiring artist struggling with the same thoughts? Um, truthfully, I would not, 
the Marvel DC thing, I've never thought like that. I never got into comics because of a love of comics. Mm -hmm. I'm not a comic reader. Per se. I've read, I read comics, but not, it's not a thing for me. It never was growing up. I had a handful of comics, the usual, but it was nothing. There was no avid love for comics. My interest in, in this kind of work is purely related to storytelling that mm -hmm. I could tell stories. I don't have to worry about a budget per se. It doesn't have to be a team. We can have a very pure vision or a, a very small team is what I mean. Um, we can have a very pure vision that ends up on the page in the way we intended um, or ends up in readers' hands or fans' hands in the way we intended. So I don't, um, so the, the idea of drawing like a Marvel style, it never occurred to me. It's of no interest to me. Um, and as far as an aspiring artist, I think, I don't think any of that's relevant. For an aspiring artist, I think being good, just be good, be good. Let what you love inspire you. The style will develop from that. If it happens to be a style that fits into a Marvel DC world, well, at least you came by it mm -hmm. with a, a pure inspiration of doing a look that you love. That'd be my thought. All right. Uh, one other thing is that music is is big for you. As I understand it, you, you only uh, picked up playing the guitar in the last several years. Yep. Um, how has that enriched your life? And what does it give you that drawing does not? Um, it allows me, it allowed me to certainly to start with something that was so hard to do that I didn't, I couldn't think of anything else when I was doing it. So it was very, very meditative in that it was fully focused and everything else fell away. Um, also a strange side effect of it that was kind of lovely is that when you get into comics or into any field where you so desperately want to be successful, um, you don't really get to enjoy the process of sucking. And <laughs> right. You don't get to enjoy that process of learning and that distinct process of getting better as you go. Whereas it allowed me to do that. It allowed me to be um, fully invested in just enjoying the process of learning, which I think reflected back on certain things with drawing in that the, you are where you are and the, you know, that idea of like, Oh, I'm not good enough or whatever. I'm like, well, you are where you are right now. And it's a, so it's been kind of liberating in that way. So Tyler, you're in a band, Grey Tongues with other comic book pros, Curtis Weeb and Ryan Ferrier. What's been the best part about making music with those guys? Everything. It was a blast. Um, it's it's super fun. I mean, I've known those guys for obviously forever. And it, it's just been a lot of fun. Uh, writing the music together, creating kind of the stories you want to tell with the music, sitting around drinking beer, smoking weed, and playing in a band. I mean, is there anything more fun? I don't think so. Can we expect an album anytime soon? Uh, we have, because uh, Curtis just moved. So we're, he moved to Sweden. So it's kind of hard oh. for him to draw him all the way over there. Um, so we're going to relaunch the band. Me and Ryan were just talking about it last week. Relaunching the band, sort of a Grey Tongue 2.0 kind of thing. And that's as far as we've talked because of all this having to be a million miles away from everybody else. Yeah. Now you, you and Matt Ken seem to have a Brubaker Phillips thing going on. Uh, now with Grass Kings and Black Badge. Um, what is it that makes you and Matt work so well? Um, I think it's the same thing that works well with any writer you're working with. Um, it's a compatibility of vision. It's not like we have a very, we have different things we want to say and stuff like that, but there's a, a, a distinct overlap. And our style of storytelling and what we see as important in how a scene should play out, I think that's the most important part. And it's a bit intangible, but I think, 
I've been generally completely blessed to work with writers who are excellent collaborators, but also me and Matt just really enjoy working together and it's very effortless. We chat, things come out, everybody's on the same page. It's, it's very effortless. Yeah, some of the most important things when dealing with a creative partnership, I guess, yeah? Yeah. Now you're, uh, people that know you, know you as a no bullshit kind of guy uh, who doesn't show yeah. too much, and you don't really show too much of yourself online. Um, but you're working in, in an industry where so many others rely on social media presence. How have you managed to keep yourself away from all of that noise? It's, um, I just don't give a shit. Really, that's the summary of it is if having, if to be successful in this industry, I have to spend an inordinate amount of time filming myself, videoing myself, creating those things, I just can't be bothered. It's so boring. Mm -hmm. I, I just have, it's basically boredom. If I'm bored, it's real hard to make me do anything. Yeah. And, and I just find being on social media, like doing it myself. I love looking at everybody else's shit on social media, but I find doing it so boring. It's also very taxing too. I, I, I find that uh, like, I, I, I'm not on any social media purely because it's just, it takes up so much time and it's like, it's and it, for very little reward some, most of the time. I have lots of other ways to waste my time. <laughs> like lots. playing music. I have more ways to waste my time than I don't need help. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of social media, you, you do have some of that uh, presence online and it's time for the part where we uh, go way back into your tweet history and ask you something you probably don't remember. I uh, know I sent you an, uh, a link from that. I wonder if you got it. Just saw. Um, yeah. And so what can you tell us about this so-called uh, bathtub doodle from 2015? To be honest, I can't remember drawing it. That well, happens actually surprisingly a lot. Um, I know at that time, I was probably doing a lot of stuff, a lot of drawing in the bathtub. I'm a big fan of, or I was, I haven't done that in a while, but in general, I've always, there's lots of comic pages and stuff that I've done fully in the bathtub. Um, how do you, how do you keep the, how do you keep your supplies from getting ruined? Or is that the reason why you use uh, um, watercolors? <laughs> you just dip it in the bathtub. No, I think I've never actually watercolored in the bathtub, actually, but I've done like all the pencils and inks in there. And I think, I think it extends to how I think about all of it. I'm not precious about any of it. If it falls in the water, whatever. <laughs> the whole thing I wonder is, if like the relaxing element of being in a bathtub, does that dictate how you, uh, how you draw? Um, no, I don't. I think how I draw just comes out if I don't overthink it. Mm -hmm. And the goal was to be in the bath. So whatever I got done in the bath, that's what was getting done because it was either get nothing done or do something in the bath. <laughs> right. Either way, somebody's winning. Yes. Um, <laughs> Now, uh, Peter Panzerfaust was uh, optioned by BBC Worldwide, Grass huh? Kings by Legendary TV, Black Badge with Netflix, and just recently news broke on Deadline that Jake Gyllenhaal is set to star in Snowblind. Can you talk about any of these projects that were optioned and their current status? Uh, Peter Panzerfaust, I think, is dead in the water at the moment. No. Oh. Uh, Grass Kings, I think is, I'm not, I actually don't remember exactly what its status is. Uh, actually, I can't, I honestly can't comment really because I, I don't remember. Like, it's, not, <laughs> it's not my job. <laughs> I'm not, it's like, well, somebody's handling it. Yeah. Um, as long as you, as long as those paychecks keep coming in. If. They would. <laughs> right. Well, you know, I mean, for someone that's, uh, you know, that has such a recent collection of work being 
picked up by Hollywood so quickly. It's 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 a testament to the storytelling that you guys have been able to put out there. You know. I was going to say something snarky, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's my thoughts about it, anyway. Uh, King of uh, King of Nowhere is your new book from Boom Studios, and that was written by W. Maxwell Prince. Now he's one of the smartest writers working in comics. What's it like working with him? Uh, well, you know what? I'll tell you what. <clears throat> he's a phenomenal writer. His scripts are great, clear, easy to work with, inspiring, all the rest of it. I think this last couple of years for me have been relatively challenging years. And I would, it would, I would love the opportunity to work with him again when I'm in a place where I could be more collaborative. This last couple of years have been challenging and my ability to be a collaborator from a story point of view, like that, it, it wasn't there. Um, I was able to obviously to do my part and execute the art from the story point of view. So largely our relationship was me working from his scripts. And I think on my part, there might've been a missed opportunity to have lots of more conversation with him, but I just wasn't in the space to be able to, to, to be that mm -hmm. person with him. But as far as working together, it's been fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, the results are on the page. Um, what is uh now what is your dream project to work on is there any particular writer character publisher story that you've always wanted to tackle or work with um no no actually um i don't i've never i don't look at it that way at all there's there's no pre-existing character i think if you'd asked me that 10 years ago i'd be like oh it'd be cool to work on like Constantine or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but now I don't look at it that way at all. I have no interest. I don't think I don't think of comics that way as a a character I want to work on or a story I want to work on. The projects I'm working on are the dream projects. I'm working on things that are inspiring. That this is what I want to make. It is. I don't. Uh, I don't. There's not even a question to answer about that. Like I have. Um, I've been asked like, oh, you know, when you get to work on Batman, then you'll know you've made it. I'm like, I, I don't think, I don't think like that about comics. I don't, I don't associate myself in any way with superheroes or the entirety of the industry. I don't think, I think of it as this book, this expression, this story, this thing we're trying to accomplish. It is nothing. Mm -hmm. It's not, I don't think of it that way. All right. And what about what about any? Are there any writers out there that you've uh, that you've uh, that you admire that you'd love to be able to work with, or that you think your art would make a great pairing with? Uh, uh yeah, like me and Lonnie are making a book. That's gonna be great. Um, um, I've been talking forever about making a book with Ed. I'd like to work with Curtis again. Mm -hmm. Uh. I, I don't think of it necessarily that way either. It's more like I grow to respect the work that, you know, these people are doing. I also like to know them personally. Mm -hmm. um, so no, I don't think of like specifically like a dream writer. I have like, I don't think I would consider, I won't work with anybody who I don't consider a dream writer. All right. Well, that's a good, that's, that's a good way to look at it. Now, uh, speaking of, of uh, Lonnie, back in March, you tweeted that you are working a collaboration with our very own co-producer on the show. Uh, can you talk about that project and what, we, what can we expect from Tyler Jenkins in the future? Um, <laughs> if we ever get it picked up, um, we're, we're having a lot of difficulty getting it picked up. Oh, why, um, why is that? Because it has a, the, a large part of the way the story is told and the reason behind some of the story has to involve com, like continual and complete nudity and graphic sex. Right. 
part of it, which is, which is part of the story. Um, so convincing somebody <laughs> to publish that has been a, uh, so far, rather a challenge. And so if, if, if a publisher doesn't step up and, uh, and, and risk publishing this and going, yeah, we'll back to this project, would you, would you guys consider just putting it out there on your own, either digitally or perhaps like a Kickstarter or something like that? Or is it yeah, something that, that you know that you're that you're more looking at from a from a publisher standpoint, being like, well, this is the one, this is the way that we want to get it out. Let's let's aim for that. Yeah, I like <clears throat> I like working with a publisher. You know, no. Yeah, I like working with a publisher. That would be a, that would be our ideal choice. <laughs> but I think I think we would consider uh, other avenues of putting it together as well so tyler you're you're a comic artist that likes to uh, mix it up in terms of the materials that they use when it comes to doing your comic books it's very uh very different style and, and process from traditionally just using pencil and ink can you talk a little bit about that uh yeah totally um <clears throat> i um, it's boring, basically. Doing the same process on every single book is boring. So, um, and it's two sides to it. One, it's boring. And two, I think probably more importantly, is um, I don't know what any book is going to look like until I get issue one script. Mm -hmm. And even like sketches and stuff I do ahead of time do not necessarily, aren't necessarily indica indicative of what the actual book's going to look like until I start responding to the script, having the characters act in scene and, and all that kind of stuff. So some of that experimentation comes with changing the materials and the process and the way I do it. Every single thing is different. Sometimes I do um, digital thumbnails, sometimes in a sketchbook, sometimes not. Um, even within a single issue, I'll change how I do a, the process to a certain degree. Um, it's, I'm not precious about the process either. Things have to change as they go and they respond to what you're trying to make. Mm -hmm. that, that's the reason is, it's boring to do the same thing every time. And it needs to be a, re, a reaction to the script. Now, Tyler, our time has come to an end and now's the time to reveal what you've been drawing this whole time. Uh, well, this is a character from Fear Case. Um, nobody's actually seen these characters yet. Um, often I base the, the characters from any book from, you know, I'll pick a musician or uh, maybe a celebrity to base kind of uh, the performance and the general idea of the facial features on. And like, for example, in Grass Kings, the three brothers were based on a young Neil Young, a young Bruce Springsteen and uh, David Bowie. And not that it looks anything specifically like them, but the, 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 the feel for them is there. And so this is uh, the two main characters in Fear Case are detectives. And I based them on um, blues musicians actually. So this is based on Cedric Burnside. Um, wow, that's awesome. Was the drummer in his grandfather's band, R.L. Burnside's band for years and, ha and has now putting out albums or has for a while been putting out albums under his own name, Cedric Burnside. And I don't know, he's great facial features, super fun to draw. So that's one of my main detectives is based on him. That's amazing. And if you want to own this awesome piece of art, check out the auction link below to bid. All proceeds from the sale of this piece will go towards Black Lives Matter. Tyler, thank you so much for being cornered with us today. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Now, thanks for watching Drawn and Cornered. Remember to bid. Make sure to subscribe and click the little bell icon to get notified for future episodes. And that's it. That's a cut. <laughs>